Hiya and welcome to my super messy office workspace edit room thing. A couple of weeks ago I was out filming on a job and I had my girlfriend in tow and she took some pictures of me working with my usual FS5 workhorse camera rig and she posted them online as you do and I shared them online as you do sometimes it helps drum up a bit of work and uh, Amongst the responses I got were some questions about the rig and things attached to it and how it helps me use it and all that kind of thing. And I thought rather than spend ages typing long-winded responses which no one will read on their phones, I would show you rather than tell you all about it. Because that's what film and video are all about. So in this little video I'm going to talk about uh, the LCD viewfinder monitor, whatever you want to call it, on the FS5 and how you can arrange things so that you're better able to see it and therefore see what the camera's up to. So first of all, talking about the LCD monitor itself, it's quite nice on the FS5, it's a reasonable size. It uh, attaches onto the side of the camera or indeed on various other places on the camera on this little 15mm uh, rod, miniature rod that screws onto the side of the top handle. and in normal use most people keep it in a position something like this and when you're not using it it folds away between the lens and the top handle very neatly like that and that means that the whole camera will fit in quite a small bag relative to its size it's very convenient keeps the monitor out of mischief and out of danger you can flip it so that you can see yourself if you're filming yourself you can see it from behind when you're filming somebody else and you can turn it sideways like this and I find this is really helpful because I quite often find I'm doing the kind of invisible producer style interview where I'm the interviewer as well as the camera operator and so you want to keep an eye on what image the camera is getting of your interviewee but you don't want to keep drawing your interviewee's attention to the fact that there's a great big camera with this great big unblinking glass eye at its front end pointing at them all the way through and if you keep dodging behind the camera to look through it you're continuously drawing their attention back to it you don't want to do that if you have the monitor sideways flip like that I can just glance at it out of the corner of my eye and check that everything is as it should be, that the exposure is good, that nobody's pulling faces in the background without constantly drawing my interviewee's attention to it. And I find that's really handy. Many flippy screens, that's quite hard to do from some angles, but with the Sony and its detachable, reorganizable monitor, you can do it quite easily. One of the drawbacks of this monitor is that it's not the world's brightest. I don't find that this is too much of a problem for me because I live in Britain where bright sunshine doesn't happen all that often and you know half of my shooting is indoors anyway but just now and again I find myself shooting outdoors on a bright sunny day and it's quite hard to see what's going on in that monitor quite hard to judge the brightness of the image or even to see the image at all. Well Sony have given us one solution to that because they've included a built-in electronic viewfinder. Interesting that they didn't include it on the FX6 which is the successor to the FS5 and I think the reason they didn't include it is because the FS5 one is a bit rubbish frankly. Uh, the image isn't very sharp, it's kind of small, it's kind of low resolution, quite difficult to use unless the camera is kind of in front of your face. So let's not worry any more about that, let's just think about how we're going to use a bigger monitor to see what's going on. Well, one option is simply to use a bigger external monitor. You could use uh, an Atomos monitor, for example, which will be super bright, you can see that in any conditions, and you can buy models which will also record on board if you connect them to the HDMI or the SDI output of the camera. And in fact, lots of them can record in rather better quality than the camera can itself, so you're squeezing more image quality out of the FS5 than its own uh, processing engine and so forth can manage. Downside of that, of course, is that you've then got an extra piece of kit to buy, to mount on the camera and to power and that means more cables and more storage and more things to bolt together and so forth. I don't own one and I, so I can't really talk about it so I'm simply going to talk about how to make it easier to see what's going on on this monitor. If there's bright sunshine one option is simply to use some kind of monitor shade 
and I have one, it's a uh, Hoodman shade. And I'd show it to you if I could, but I can't find it. Uh, so I'll find some internet pictures of it. It's simply uh, four pieces of plastic joined together in a sort of cardboard square section tube, all contained in sort of ballistic nylon type stuff. And there's straps made out of Velcro and elastic and what have you that attach it to the monitor. When you're not using it, it folds flat. It's quite uh, affordable and easy to get a hold of. And it extends maybe three or four inches back from the surface of the monitor. So it casts quite a deep shade over it. So if all you want to do is just keep the sun off the face of the monitor, that works really well, cheap and cheerful, does the doing. What if you want to use the camera on your shoulder? And the more observant among you will have noticed that my camera is rigged for use on the shoulder. Well, you may be able to put it on your shoulder and just look at the monitor, or you may not. You're probably going to find that once the camera is on your shoulder, if it's reasonably well balanced, the monitor's an inch in front of your face. You can shift the camera forward on rails or whatever, whatever you're using for your shoulder rig, but then the weight of the camera is in front of your shoulder and you're likely to be holding most of that weight on your hands, which kind of belies the point of having a shoulder rig in the first place. You want to keep the camera over your shoulder or the, the uh, balance point of the camera lens combined over your shoulder, but you just need the, the viewfinder further forward in front of your face. One way of doing that just moving the monitor forward without moving the whole camera forward is something like this land part part. This is codenamed MEA-01 and as you can see it, it screws onto the camera on the same little rosette fitting where the standard Sony monitor stud fits but the stud slides fore and aft on this little bit of rail and this gives you the opportunity to put the monitor maybe three inches further forward on the whole rig than it otherwise would be. And that may be enough to get it where you can see it with your camera on your shoulder. So there you go. You can slide the whole thing forward and back and get it to where you can comfortably focus on it. And even me with my rapidly advancing middle-aged eyesight, if I, provide, if, if I don't mind looking over the top of my glasses at the monitor, I can see it with it right at the front end of the rail. We're kind of missing a trick here though, because if you've got the camera on your shoulder and the viewfinder is close to you, with a little bit of optical assistance, you could have a magnified view of that viewfinder and then you'd be able to see in more detail whether things are sharp and study better what's going on in your image and make sure that everything's as you'd like it to be. In short, what you need is a loop, L-O-U-P-E, uh, to go onto the monitor to magnify it. Well, here's one. This is made by uh, Kinotechnic, which is spelt a bit funny, but I'll put a link up somewhere. And this particular one is, they, they call it the LCD VF BM. And I think that's because it goes on LCDs. You can use them then as viewfinders. And this particular one was made for the original Black, Man Black Magic pocket cinema camera. That's a mouthful, isn't it? But it turns out that the original black magic, magic pocket cinema camera had a, a uh, viewfinder or monitor much the same size as the FS5s and so it fits pretty well. It's got this ring of strong magnets around the back of its body and you get a sticky metal ring that goes around your viewfinder and then it just magnets on. And they're quite strong magnets and it's reasonably firmly attached. And you can then press your eye to the viewfinder and see what's going on. There are some downsides with this though. There are some really quite serious drawbacks. It does the doing, but only just. First of all, uh, it's not particularly expensively molded. And if you look carefully at the back, you may be able to see that the top and the bottom are not flat straight lines it bows in slightly and this means that the inside surface of this this tunnel impinges slightly on your view of the viewfinder through the optics which is a real shame also the inside surface when i bought this was quite shiny black plastic and there were reflections going on which spoiled the image you got and i fixed that by removing the optics and just spraying some matte black paint in there but you kind of shouldn't really have to do that with a brand new product the magnifying lens that comes on the back of it to give you a magnified view of your LCD, not very good optical quality. 
you get a slightly kind of swimmy, um, queasiness inducing image uh, that's not quite sharp. And it's not that it's not sharp all the way across, there's a kind of ring of unsharpness uh, around the middle. And there's really nothing much you can do about that. And finally, there's no diopter adjustment on this. Diopter adjustment? What's she talking about? Well, what you're getting when you look through this lens is a virtual image of what's on the viewfinder. And to pull that virtual image into sharp focus, you may need correction to fix with your particular eyesight focusing on this virtual image. I'm not really sure about exactly how the optic, optics of that works. But you'll notice that, that many cameras which have a viewfinder you put your eye to have some sort of little clicky dial typically which you can rotate to pull that image into sharp focus. And a loop needs that too. This one doesn't have any adjustability built in. Instead what you have to do is take the eye cup off and add or remove these little screw-on magnifying lenses. And you, they, Kinotechnic will sell you these, but you can get a kit of them in this size, is 37 millimeters from Amazon or eBay for 20, 25 pounds. And if you get a kit of five or six of them, the chances are you'll find one that suits your eyesight and will adapt this loop and this viewfinder to your eyesight quite nicely. But it's unfortunate that you need a different lens for every person potentially who might use the camera. Uh, because it's unlikely that any random other person will be able to put their eye to the camera and find that it works nicely straight out of the box. So, it works, it's better than nothing, but it's not ideal. Where do we go from there? Well, the next step up is probably this, which is the Zucuto Z Finder. Yes, I am British. Yes, I am calling it a Z Finder. I think it sounds better than Z Finder, and I'm pretty sure that's what Zacuto had in mind when they called it that. So I'm going to call it the Z Finder. It's exactly the same principle. It's a light-proof plastic box which clips onto your viewfinder with some optics on the back to give you a magnified view of said viewfinder. This one doesn't just magnet on. As you can see, it's a much more uh, involved arrangement with a sort of cage that fits around the LCD. So we can slide it on and then it, it clips over very positively and clips into place. And there it is. Now the first drawback with that is fairly obvious, which is that the Z Finder is kind of heavy and it flops, it droops. It's not going to stay where you want it. And this is something, of course, that the uh, Kinotechnic suffers from too. This just suffers from it more. If you try and press your eye to it, as it is, it will, you'll be chasing it around. Not just the whole, not just the camera on the, uh, the tripod, but the chasing the viewfinder around because the standard Sony mount has nothing to stop it, apart from a mild detent, nothing to stop it rotating in, in these two planes. Fortunately, Zucuto, Zucuto thought of that and supply it with this extra bit of mounting hardware, which I shall now proceed to mount. Clearly my computer's finished doing something behind my back. So this rather cunning bit of ironmongery bypasses the uh, kind of two-plane Sony mount and gives you a rigid fixing with two, uh, pos two options for mounting it on the stud here. So you can really put it right out in front of the camera if you want or bring it back in somewhat. And it's got a, a quick release fixing here, which does up and with a quarter of a turn, you can move it from being absolutely rigid to being able to swivel it up and down a bit to suit whether you're standing above the camera and operating at waist level or whether you're shooting on your shoulder or even whether you've got this up at head height and you're having to look up into it. All very nice. Because this is rigid and won't swivel sideways, you no longer have the problem of the viewfinder moving away from you as you press your eye into it and that works really well. It's got a diopter adjustment, that's what this red ring here is all about. And in addition to that, it comes with these two spacers which can be clipped into the, the body of the loop and that just moves the optics further away in two choices of increments or both from the LCD itself. So I find that for my advanced middle-aged eyesight, I need both of these and a little bit of diopter adjustment to get it in sharp focus. But now it is in sharp focus and the optics are way, way better than in the Kinotechnic loop. Thank you. 
and I get really sharp images which I can look at all day without starting to feel swimmy or eyes watering or anything like that. Uh, this is just a future version of me. You can tell because you can see me editing myself already back there and up there. I forgot to mention uh, that one nice feature of this is that oops, uh, you can just undo this little catch and flip the Z Finder up out of the way so that you can see the naked LCD underneath. And that's really quite handy. You don't always want to have the camera up to your eye. You might be operating at waist level or ankle level with the top handle and we're wanting to look down on the LCD. You might just want to show your rushes to the people that you're working with. And if you flip this up out of the way, you're bypassing any optical correction that only works for your particular eyesight and everyone can see what's going on. Thought I'd mention it. An additional thing. There are some minor downsides. One is that, of course, with this mounted, you can no longer swing the LCD away and tuck it away be between the lens and the top handle to get it out of the way. And that means that if you want to have it rigged inside its bag, you're going to need a bigger bag. It's kind of bulky and heavy. And people often complain that if you put the camera, if you don't have some sort of big base plate on the camera and you put it down on a flat surface with the Z Finder attached, it'll probably fall over to the left. Okay, so put it down on its left side in the first place and the problem goes away. Those are about the only problems apart from its cost. I found that uh, when I looked at the price of a new one, I kind of recoiled and decided I'd manage with what I had for the time being. And then I set up an eBay search and I think I had to watch for maybe six or eight months before one came up and I won it for a sensible price. You may have to do the same. Or you could spring for a new one. Last thing to say about loops in general is that there is a quite a powerful magnifying lens at the eyepiece end. If the sun shines through that magnifying lens onto the viewfinder, it's quite likely to leave burn marks or even destroy the whole thing, and you'd probably rather that didn't happen. Zucuto have allowed for that by supplying with the Z Finder this flappy thing which secures inside the eye cup, and once it's in place, every time you take your eye away from the eye cup, it flops back into position and protects it from any sun that might shine through there. Quite sensible if you're operating outdoors in, I don't know, Los Angeles, <laughs> where the sun shines quite often, I've heard, um, and you really don't want to damage your LCD. I find it's a bit of a pain um, because every time I take my eye away, I've then got to go back in with my hand and lift it away. And like I said, the sun doesn't shine in Britain that often anyway. But you do need to be aware that if the sun is shining, it could burn holes in your viewfinder and you don't want that. I just got into the habit of when the sun is shining. Yeah, thank you, shut up. When the sun is shining, I just turn this down uh, so that the sun is unlikely to be shining through it. And so far, I've not experienced any problems. So there we go. Uh, three different options for improving your chances of seeing what your camera's up to by means of the Zucuto Z Finder, the Kinotechnic Loop, or simply a Hoodman or improvised monitor shade. I kind of feel I want to stop the recording by pressing the button here, but that won't work because you're over there on that camera. <laughs>